Hey, uh, good morning, everybody. I'd firstly like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Sheila Fanukin. Um, my background is mental health nursing. Um, I'm a clinical nurse specialist in mental health, and I'm now a graduate of the DCA program. So my focus on today is discussing breaking up without breaking down. So dealing with the, sorry, dealing with the divorce might be unpleasant. You must remember that you must now focus on your new life and preserve your mental health is vital. Okay, divorce and separation, it's never easy, even when one knows that it's the right decision for them. It's a time of change and it's a time of uncertainty. It's a time of relearning how to live without your spouse. It's a time where one can feel like they have lost their identity. So homes raise stress inventory um, has ranked divorce as the second most stressful life event for an individual. So it has got that acknowledgement, which is really important. And the first most stressful life event he has rated is the death of a spouse. So separation and divorce is comparable with the five stages of grief, okay? So the first one is the denial stage. This is where it's difficult for the individual in accepting that their marriage is over. This is where they no longer um, have the same feelings, and that they also, there's just a huge amount of change going on in their life. So the second one is the questioning and the bargaining stage. And this is where they question themselves, like, could they have done something differently? Third is anger and depression stage. Uh, this is the stage of the grieving process, which would be deemed as the most dangerous stage because people go through depression and anxiety and one may flow back and forth between depression and anger or they may get stuck and this is where a person should reach out for help and if it's noted help should be offered. So CBT um, is cognitive behavioral therapy. All right. Sorry, have I gone too far there? No. Um, it's cognitive. Sorry, I'm really sorry. Can I just go back? Um, I didn't discuss them all. Uh, so number four is the evaluation stage. And this is where the individual has the opportunity to reflect. And it this is an important time because the individual gets to look back on what actually happened during their marriage and they can see what actually went wrong and how to avoid it in the future. So five is acceptance of change. This is where the individual accepts their loss. Uh, this is where they accept that the marriage is over and they start to building a new life for themselves. Regardless of who initiated the divorce, each individual will experience grief during and after divorce. So CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy, and it's a talking therapy that helps one to manage their problems uh, by changing the way they think and behave and this has been very effective for a range of problems like depression and anxiety, uh, alcohol and drug issues, marital issues, eating disorders, and severe mental illness. Okay, this is uh, an exercise that one can actually do, where one can actually break down any moment in their life, for example, going through divorce and where they might actually get stuck. So it's an exercise called the hot cross bun. 
So you can get a piece of paper and you can write out on it, like say, first of all, do your cross and put your headings in there, like thoughts, emotions, physical sensations and behavior. Okay. And you can, for example, um, when a person is even starting the divorce process, they might feel like they can't cope or they might be experiencing something stressful while it's going on. So the emotion that they most likely will feel then will be fear. Uh, the physical sensations most likely would be rapid uh, breathing and heart pounding. And their behavior would most likely be to avoid. So by doing this exercise, a person can see what is actually stopping them in progressing. So like they can't cope. Fear is taking over. And then their physical sensations, the rapid breathing and the heart uh, pounding and the avoidance then. So it's given them the opportunity to break this cycle, to move forward. So divorce is a painful and emotional process, an expense laden ordeal. This results in high levels of stress while navigating divorce for most individuals. There are some methods that can ease this stress. So I'll discuss these. So first of all, stress of divorce may present as a fear of life after divorce. A person might be fearful of starting over and how that look, the fear of how they're going to cope solo, their health issues, and their health might suffer. So weight gain, or weight loss, sleep disturbance, high blood pressure, poor eating habits, high cholesterol or depression. So social concerns that they might have would be like friends which are shared. Will that continue? Will they lose friends during this? Um, their partner's family, will they cut them out? Will they any longer be part of their uh, ex-partner's family and how will people perceive them now will they look at them differently so feeling of failure this can result uh, in shame and can also be uh, cause low self-esteem and distraction all of these lead to problems for example somebody uh may be extremely distracted during this period and not function at their optimum in work, or they mightn't parent as well as they normally would. So, so it's important for one to acknowledge and allow themselves to feel all the emotions. It's inevitable that you will be flooded with various emotions. For example, anger, they may feel relieved, they may feel sad, lonely, ashamed, irate, and upset. Grieving divorce is much like grieving a loss. Divorce grief is compared to the loss of a loved one in terms of intensity and overcoming divorce does not happen overnight. So it's not a quick fix and it does take time for a person to go through it. So it's very important for a person to live for the future and not the past. And when a person is going through this, it's very easy for them to escape back to their past because it would be a place where they most likely were comfortable once, where they might be fearful of the future. If one is going through the divorce that one didn't want, they will be feeling very vulnerable and dwelling in the past a lot. It's very important to acknowledge their feelings. Accepting help and support, it's important to lean on people that they can trust. Um, also, it's very important to get form a support group to assist in building a support network. And it's critical to have the support of your friends and family during this challenging time. It may give you comfort to know that you're not alone going through it. Positive thoughts to promote self-confidence. Person's self-confidence would most likely be quite low at this time. And affirmations are very good for them. 
um, journaling is good, uh, focusing on all the positives in their life as divorce is complicated and usually never at the fault of just one. And they must realize that. And because negative thoughts can become overwhelming if they start to blame themselves. So to maintain their mental health, exercise is really important as it releases endorphins, the feel good hormone that can help to improve your ability to cope with stress and anxiety and get rid of the negative energy. So if a person starts then to make poor food choices and binge on comfort foods, it, um, it can cause depression um, because they'll become depressed with how they're feeling. They'll be sluggish. Um, they won't be as motivated as they normally are. Their thoughts won't be as clear as they normally are. And it's very important to have fruit and veg as well, healthy diet, so they can have more energy and improve their mood. Sleep without lack, um, poor sleep patterns, lack of sleep will make a person irritable. Uh, stress or anxiety may result due to irregular sleep patterns. Sleep is important for your mental health as it helps us to think clearly and gives us the energy to deal with our problems. And during this time, um, people are quite stressed and they need all the energy and to be able to think clearly going through this. Meditation and mindfulness is very helpful as it helps the body to relax and the mind and improve the overall health and well-being of the person. You can learn to not react or become overwhelmed by what's going on around you by doing mindfulness. Instead, you'll notice your thoughts, feelings and sensations. So you'll get greater awareness by doing a bit of mindfulness. Therapy is very important if a person isn't coping. Um, obtaining expert assistance is one of the best ways to deal with your emotional and mental impacts of divorce. It is undoubtedly the best method for self-healing. Therapists are skilled at guiding you through your emotions and providing you with effective strategies. And it's very important to seek help, like to go to the GP where they can advise on um, alternatives to for you as well, or somebody may need to be started on medication, but the GP would discuss that and assess for those needs. Some of my references. These are some supports that are quite helpful and there's some apps in there as well that are free, that are very um, good for dealing with stress. And that's it. Thank you. I'm open to any questions that anyone may have. You have to stop sh sharing, Sheila, so that people can see your face. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. What would you say is the best thing that a divorce coach can do for somebody that they suspect is going through depression during their divorce? Um, it, like if they're very depressed and not motivated or anything like that, it would be to go to their GP would be the first thing to get assessed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it would also be very important, like to enable them with some skills, like to help them to get away from like feeling as depressed as they are, like future focusing them. Um, also giving them some tips like on improving their sleep, um, getting out and about, uh, motivating them really into things that they're already interested in, but just to spark it again for them. Yeah. Sheila, what about a client who um, tells you everything they know they should be doing um, and is totally overwhelmed 
but doesn't actually put anything into practice because they are actually so overwhelmed they don't even know where to start yes or not even they don't even know where to start but they actually can't prioritize their needs yeah that's probably where in divorce coaching it'd be very important to sit down with them and to ask them like what do they actually want to achieve like and like on a daily basis where they actually have to set out in a diary like what they want to achieve out of their day and to start working on that start small yeah but if they're completely overwhelmed they probably aren't even attending like to their personal hygiene needs any of their basics like nutrition anything like that or sleeping well and most likely assessment would be needed by a professional so what what would be the telltale signs that we'd need to look out for <clears throat> I think, first of all, motivation that they aren't functioning in their daily lives. It's the first telltale sign um, that they're finding it quite hard to even get things that they normally would get done, like get up in the morning, have a shower, attend work, um, attend, like making sure even that they have food in, their personal hygiene is slipping now. You'd notice it. Um, when they're in the middle of conversation with you, it's going very slow. Um, it should be fairly obvious at the start. And they'd have no get up and go in them at all, like. Mm -hmm. So if we if we noticed somebody somebody's body language has changed or their appearance has changed how can we tackle <laughs> that tactfully you know you can't very well say to somebody and especially if we're on online we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be able to necessarily um notice the difference in the personal hygiene field mm -hmm. Um, I think that's where you'd have to start questioning, like, how are they getting on with their closest, like their closest friends and stuff? Um, are the relationships changing there? Um, like, they probably would feed back to you that, yeah, my family are telling me that I'm not motivated at the moment, that I'm not getting up and that I'm not going out and meeting them, that I'm um, becoming very isolated within myself. So it's probably important to ask them, like, are you isolating yourself? Tell me about your daily routine. What are you doing every day? Um, has anything changed? Reflect back on, say, go back a month and compare, like, um, what has changed between now and then in your your own self and your own daily living and how you perceive yourself. Yeah. I mean, this is one and of the they things. They start to identify it themselves. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the things that we advocate when we're training our um, divorce coaches that we must make self care one of their priorities. Because if they're not looking after themselves, then they're not going to be able to look after anybody else either. One of the, the things that we, we look at in, in detail is. Things like sleep, that is impacted by all sorts of things. It can be impacted by the relationship itself. But sleep can in turn impact on everything else. So it can impact on their career. It can impact on their general health. And the same for other aspects of health and wellness. But through depression into the mix then that's going to be exacerbated so what what would you say is your top tip to a a divorce coach and be somebody going through divorce to help them to combat 
these symptoms of depression? Um, I think first one and the top one is sleep pattern. They have to maintain a really good sleep pattern. And secondly, is to build that support network. They have to have a really good support network. And something that we always advocate like in work with our patients is that they have to have a plan for the day, the week ahead, the day ahead. There always has to be a plan. And like, it's important that they are looking forward to something like everyone needs to look forward to something. And it's a really big red flag if they're looking forward to nothing. Any questions or observations from and anybody else? If, um, if those people are not, uh, they don't have a support network as friends or relatives, who should they approach for uh, to create that uh, support network? Who would you recommend? So An organization, <laughs> charities? There is, yeah. A lot of mine now be Irish-based, obviously, but... Um, there would be a lot of like if they even got in touch with their local mental health um, center in their town and stuff, they will have like support group meetings for people who are suffering with depression. Um, there is they are available. There's also supports online. Uh, there is people that they can speak to, like the Samaritans. Um, there's there is many supports. But really, it's kind of like they have to get back out there, get back out into their hobbies and stuff. But for the meantime, it's their family, the people who they spend the most time with. I suppose one, one of the roles of the divorce coaches is, is to bring back that level of motivation to get them to start looking forward. But Julia, if they were that down and unsupported, the most likely thing is they would also have like it's if they were linked with the mental health services, they'd have a support worker linked with them okay. at all times. Yeah. So if somebody was that low and stuff, they'd still have somebody visiting them, whether it's community mental health nurse, it'd be somebody. Because they won't take action by themselves. So there needs to be no. someone who is checking on them and uh, uh, motivating and inspiring them to do things. So, okay. And, yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, some people are uh, lonely or can rely on, on family for whatever reason or, or maybe they lost their friends. So it's just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, during COVID, uh, the government here noticed that there was a huge gap with the elderly, especially, whereas they didn't have people really calling to them. They didn't have a good support network. And even such small thing like filling out forms to get like um, bathroom renovations done and all of that. They set up this group called Alone and they support people in befriending them. And that's excellent like resource to give like an elderly patient like they'll ring them on the phone or they will call to their house or any of that yeah 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 I mean I'm, I'm as you know I come from Spain so culturally I see some difference with uh, England and uh, when I was living in Spain you have a big community of neighbors I, I live in London so perhaps outside London is different but um, it's sometimes it's even hard to get to know uh, your your neighbors and uh, and and, and not, I come from a culture that I'm used to that anyone uh, would come uh, to check on you or uh, knock on your door you're welcome at any time here it seems that many times you need to make an appointment in advance before going uh, to see someone so yeah okay um so just trying to understand more about um what is there? Um, yeah, thank you very much. Any other questions, observations? No, I shall stop the recording.